Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2021 film Jacob's Wife. It's a Shutter exclusive and it's coming to Shutter on Thursday, August 19th. And for that reason, this is a no spoiler review, although I will be telling you about some thematic things. I'm not going to give you a whole lot as far as synopsis goes, like a sentence or two, because I don't want to spoil anything if people want to go into this blind. And that's how I would recommend going into it. If you've already seen a trailer, if you've already seen promotional stuff from Shudder, it's probably ruined what like the core idea of the story is, but it's not all about that core idea because it's an old idea that's been used so many times before, but it's about how it's told here and why it's told here and the underlying subtext of how that's used and the real story that's going on, which is the subtextual story uh, with a bunch of the themes going on. So I'll talk a little bit about that, but not ruin the events of the film. This is directed by Travis Stevens, uh, who did a good job with the directing, I'll say. Uh, he The other film he did is Girl on the Third Floor, which I had heard some people talking about. I heard a little bit of buzz about that. I just haven't gotten around to seeing it yet. I do plan to at some point. Uh, written by Stevens, as well as Kathy Charles, who wrote the 2020 Castle Freak, which was the remake that Barbara Crampton was involved in, involved in and obviously she's involved in this film as well. Uh, and Mark Steensland was also a writer who wrote a script for the film The Special, which I'm not familiar with. Uh, oh, and I haven't seen the Castle Freak remake. I've seen the original, not the remake yet, but I heard the remake was pretty solid. Uh, Barbara Crampton not only acts in the film, but is a producer and apparently was very integral in getting this film actually made. From what I read, she kind of shepherded it along the way in order to, uh, all the way to completion, basically. So... She, without Barbara Crampton, it sounds like you don't really get this film. So that's very cool. Uh, Crampton's in it, but also the other big name is Larry Fessenden. And it's always good to see both of them. I mean, they are film legends, basically. Horror film legends uh, for people who are real nerdy into the horror genre. You know who Barbara Crampton is. You know who Larry Fessenden is, basically. And the biggest thing about those two, not only are they good actors, like we've always known they're good actors, their chemistry together is my favorite part of this film. Uh, their chemistry is great, the way they play off each other, the way they interact with each other. Now that speaks a little bit to how the characters are written, but it also speaks to kind of the charisma of the two of them and just how they work together, honestly. You can see that they had a good relationship on camera uh, and probably off camera, I would assume too, because by all accounts that I hear for, uh, about both of those individuals, they're very nice people. Anyway... Quick synopsis. It's about this dude, Jacob. Well, it's mainly about Jacob's wife, as you might <laughs> surmise from the title. Uh, it's about Jacob's wife, played by Barbara Crampton, and her husband, Jacob, played by Larry Fessenden. Uh, he is a minister at a church, and they've kind of settled into an, a uh, bland type of life until one day that something very out of the ordinary happens to uh, Jacob's wife, and... That's all I'm going to tell you. Uh, things, turmoil happens. Their lives get turned upside down in interesting ways. So that's all I'm giving you. Now, unfortunately, the quality of the film didn't look so good. Now, I'm going to guess that this just has to do with the screener copy that I got. Something to do with them like porting it over, digitizing it. I don't know what the deal is. But my screener copy did not look good. It looked kind of a little bit pixelated at times, a little bit fuzzy, and it wasn't an interconnect, internet connection issue, I will tell you that for sure. Uh, so I was watching, I'm like, there's no way that they didn't shoot this in HD. So this has to be an issue with something with the specific screener. I would hope that that's not the exact version that they're putting on Shutter. that it's going to look a lot cleaner. I would assume so. So if it doesn't look like it's in HD then it wasn't just my screener's problem, but if it does look like it's in HD, it was just a problem with my screener. So just throwing that information out there, but I fully expect that it'll look great on Shutter when it's put up officially. Um, the music, excellent, excellent, excellent in this music, not is in this film, sorry, excellent. The music in this film is excellent. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, not only is it composed really well, but the way it's paired up with the scenes it's used in, great. Uh, a lot of the times you can go through a film and not really notice the music because it kind of just blends into the film. 
but there are times where you definitely notice it and it's either because it's done really well or it's done really poorly and in this instance it's the very well category so i wanted to give a shout out to the composer the person who did the music for this tara bush excellent job with the music on this one i hope you get even more jobs after this bigger jobs because you did an excellent job uh, dir directing and cinematography is definitely good. There are some interesting shots, really interesting camera movement. Uh, it keeps you visually engaged in the film, and so for that reason, it looks good. It definitely looks good, other than that little issue I talked about. Uh, about 20 minutes in is when things actually get, get going, so they don't wait too long. It's like an hour and 38 minutes with the credits and everything, so... Uh, 20 minutes in is not bad to like really start the main core story going. So obviously they have to rent, lay down the groundwork. You need to understand the characters, know who they are, know, know what their relationships like, what their life's like. So the fact that they were able to do that in 20 minutes is actually pretty good, in my opinion. It is a bit slower paced of a film. Just know that. But even though it's slower paced, it still feels like it's paced well for what the story is that they're trying to tell. It's not a high, uh, I don't want to say, I was going to say high impact, but no, that, that's not what it is. It's not a high energy story. It's not just like a go, go, go type story. It's a bit more leisurely. Like that's the nature of it. That's the nature of the characters. That's the nature of the story that needs to be told here. So it feels appropriate. And like I said, it is slower paced. So some people might have a problem with that, but it feels like it's paced well for what the story is and what they're trying to pull off here. So just know that. There is a mix of CGI and practical effects. Obviously the practical effects look a lot better than the CGI. The CGI isn't used a ton, a ton. They did go heavier on the practical, so I was very happy about that. Uh, makes for some good gore in the film. I wouldn't say that they're necessarily like great kills in the film, but there is good gore. Plenty of it. Lots of spurting blood. And that always gets me. I always love kind of like an ar arterial spray type blood scene. I'm, I'm a fan. The lighting is handled very well. This is another one of those things where either you... Well, I mean, usually you don't really recognize this in film. It just kind of like slips by. But the times that you do, either it's because it's really well done or it's very poorly done. In this case, it is really well done. Because there are a bunch of scenes that are in the dark. But you can see everything you need to plus some. So they did a great job at carefully lighting these scenes, especially the darker ones, so good job on that. There are some moments that are pleasantly comedic and actually sometimes cross a little bit into the zany category. Now I know some people may be being like, zany? I don't know how I feel about zany, but it's not a bad zany. Like, it feels zany, and it is kind of zany at times, but it's it feels appropriate, like it's endearing, it's kind of funny, it makes it more fun as well. Now the weird thing to me initially was that it's not funny at all until I you know, like 45-ish minutes into it, and then that's kind of where the comedic slash zany stuff kind of kicks in. So it's a little bit weird that that's the case, but because for most films they establish that there's going to be comedy to it early. Now having said that, it still works. Like, I'm just saying from an observation standpoint that it's odd that it was done that way, but it doesn't feel odd. Like, once the comedic stuff starts, it feels natural within the story, and they integrated it in a good way. And there's stuff that you'll legitimately kind of chuckle at, um, or just kind of smile at, you know, if you're, if you're not, if it's not easy to make you laugh. But, yeah, uh, it really does increase the fun, though, along with the story. And I think that for some of the stuff that they did, you kind of needed it to be more lighthearted in order for people to accept it better. Just saying. Um, the ending is pretty solid. It's not like the best ending ever, but it is a solid ending, especially for the story. And the title does get referenced at the end of the film. So it's not just a simplistic title that someone w with a lack of creativity came up with. There is an importance to it. And as addressed at the end of the film, so just know that. Because usually when I see films like this that have like a really, you know, basic title like that, I'm like, really, we couldn't come up with something better? But when it has importance, when it really ties in, I'm down, and it does in this. So thematically speaking, three things I wanna point out. There's a point about being in a relationship that makes you feel overshadowed, ignored, and kept under thumb. 
that is something that I know a lot of people can probably connect with. Uh, I'm sure we've all been there at some point in our lives, whether that's with a loved one or, you know, someone at work or, you know, any type of relationship in your life. You know, those ones where you feel like you're overshadowed, you're not getting a 50-50 in that relationship. So that is at play and it's done really well. Uh, it also feels like it takes aim at aging a little bit and how that changes who you are um, to the point that you kind of wake up one day and you're kind of like, where did my life go? Who am I now? Why am I this person now? What happened? You know, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's something that I think everyone experiences in life. And as someone who is now 40 years old, and obviously as your life goes on, you have more health problems and stuff like that. You start looking back and saying, how am I here? Now, within the context of the film, it's kind of more from a standpoint of things get very settled. Like I said in the beginning, things get very bland. And then you're just like, I used to be a more vibrant person. I used to be more exciting. My life used to be more exciting. And how did I end up in this point being so bland and so ho-hum? And every day is exactly the same. And I'm always exactly the same. And what do you do after that when you recognize it? So, and finally, it is about how far you're willing to go for someone you love. And you'll find out exactly what I mean when you watch the film. And I would recommend that you watch the film. It is good. I definitely recommend it. It's, it's, a, it's a fun time. And I think in the end, if you think back to everything they're trying to get through to you, subtextually, thematically, um, there's a lot to think about there. There definitely is. So, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it, oh man, I'm between three and three and a half. I'm going to go the three. It feels more like a three to me, um, but it is a good film. But know that I was between the three and three and a half. So I would love to hear what everyone else out there thinks. If you have watched this film, go ahead and put comments down there, or you can go watch it, then come back, put down comments. And spoilers in the comments, that is fine. We can go ahead and talk about it. Um, do me a favor, though, hit the subscribe button if you have not already. If you have already, thank you very much to you. I uh, really appreciate that. If you haven't, it is quick, it is painless, it costs you no money, and it really does mean a lot to me because it keeps me motivated. Every time I see that I get a new subscriber, it gives me a little bit of a burst of energy legitimately, and I am more apt to feel more energetic about doing these videos because I'm not doing it for money or anything like that. It's just to put it out there and work on building a kind of nerdy horror community here. So please subscribe. Uh, also, just hit the notification bell button, and that way you'll know when new videos are coming up so you can check them out. Regardless, though, thank you for taking your time to check this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.